You are interested in the unusual, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. Smart, don't you? What? That way. Come back here. I'll show you who's smart. He's asking for it. Give it to him. Faster. Tribal codes and such do not necessarily apply to the leaders of society. No. No, Mr. Stein, I, I can't see where your friend Nietzsche's theories of any application at all here. Hammurabi, Moses, Solomon, Justinian, they were all known as lawgivers. Actually, my question was whether Moses and the others felt that they themselves had to obey those laws. All men are bound by law, Mr. Steiner. And had Nietzsche been a lawyer instead of a German philosopher, he would have known that too. Are you going to tell me that Moses felt himself above the laws that he laid down for his own people? Oh, I don't know, sir. He had a motley crew on his hands, and he had to get them through the desert somehow. <laughs> Can you cite an example of any of these men who failed to respect the law or the rights of the individual? Can Nietzsche explain that away, Mr. Steiner? Oh, I think so, sir. If you've read him, sir, you'll remember that he conceives the Superman as being detached from such human emotions as anger and greed and lust and the will to power. And all completely beyond my comprehension apparently not yours or Nietzsche's. Perhaps my thinking is outloaded, but I still cling to the theory that if we were all super intellects, we would nevertheless evolve our own code of laws. No, super laws, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but just for once, I shall take a leaf from Nietzsche's book, place myself above the law, and grade you accordingly. <laughs> About this Nietzsche stuff, do you really think there are super intellects? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. So if we used Plato's system, you see, all children would be wards of the state and assured of being educated correctly. Wouldn't that be terribly sad and impersonal? Children do have feelings and emotions, don't they? Of course they do. But for whom? Why should it be their parents that choose them? I certainly didn't choose mine. It's pure biological accident. You feel that way about your own mother and father? I have very little in common with my father. Or my mother. My mother died when I was eight years old. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just, I think he never wanted to go through with it anyway. That's not true, and you know it, Artie. We agreed it was the true test of the superior intellect. Superior intellect? <laughs> what do you think of that, Teddy? You and I work out this perfect, beautiful crime. And then the superior intellect tries to see how many ways he can... We agreed to explore all the possibilities of human experience, didn't we? 
and emotionally detached. Murder's nothing. It's just a simple experience. Murder and rape? Do you know what beauty there is in evil? Is there? Yes. You're trying to frighten me, John. If you were to move now, why don't you run? Is that what you want me to do? Yes. Do you have to attack me, John? I don't have to do anything. If I attack you, it's because I choose. No! See, when they get to the slaughterhouse, he decks to one side and the silly sheep go in to get their throats cut. That black devil knows it. There's only one man for this case. He's the best lawyer in the country, and he's here in Chicago. That atheist? I won't have him. He's a skeptic who makes a mockery of religion. And the best trial lawyer in the country. A charlatan. A lying, drunken jury slayer. But a winner. Two evil minds that don't deserve to live a day longer. Do you really think these boys don't know the difference between right and wrong? That's the legal definition of insanity in the state, and no team of psychiatrists is going to change it. I wish they'd have hung us right off the bat. Is that your only reaction, Artie? No remorse, no feeling of remorse. I wasn't expecting you to fall down on your knees and thank God for deliverance. God? That sounds rather strange coming from you, Mr. Wilbur. A lifetime of doubt and questioning doesn't necessarily mean I've reached any final conclusions. Well, I have. And God has nothing to do with it. You sure, John? In those years to come, you might find yourself asking if it wasn't the hand of God dropped those glasses. And if he didn't, who did? And as to the underlying motivations, what function? What purpose? Why? These appear not to be cared about. Only how is a matter of concern. And even there, such answers as may be presented are irrelevant, or at best non sequiturs. If this is all, there is a great void, a great emptiness.